Hello everyone, I'm Norman Wabner. In this lecture, we're going to have a look at some applications of row reduction. We'll start with a very simple but important application, which is to decide whether a given vector is in the span of a set of other vectors. So the question is, is the vector 2, 1, minus 1 in the span of the three vectors that we have here? Vectors 1, minus 2, 3, 0, 3, minus 3, and minus 1, minus 1, 0. Now what does that mean? Well, the span of a set of vectors is the set of linear combinations of those three vectors. So we're really asking, is the vector 2, 1, minus 1 a linear combination of the three vectors? That's the same as what we have here in blue. We have that we're looking for a multiple of the first vector 1, minus 2, 3, plus a multiple of the second vector, 0, 3, minus 3, plus another multiple of the third vector, minus 1, minus 1, 0. That whole combination should be the vector 2, 1, minus 1. We're interested in whether or not that vector equation has a solution, x1, x2, and x3. Can we find x1 and x2, x3? That will solve that system. Okay, now actually this one vector equation is equivalent to three ordinary equations because there's a first component, there's a second component, there's a third component. So this is equivalent to the system that we get just by reading those three lines. The first line is x1 plus 0x2 minus x3 equals 2. The next line is minus 2x1 plus 3x2 minus x3 equals 1. And the third line is 3x1 minus 3x2 plus 0x3 equals minus 1. Okay, so these are different ways of thinking about the, the original span um, question. So once we have it in this system of linear equations form, then we can immediately write down the augmented matrix, which is over here. And not really surprisingly, have a look at what the relationship between this augmented matrix is and the original vectors, okay? So what we see is that the columns of this augmented matrix are just the vectors in the spanning set. And the column on the right-hand side is the vector 2, 1, minus 1 that we're trying to write in terms of those columns. So well, let's make a note of that. So note that uh, the spanning vectors are the columns of the left-hand side of this matrix and our general vector is the right-hand side. And the right-hand side is the vector we are trying to write as a linear combination. We're trying to express as a linear combination. So I've been rather explicit about this because this is an important understanding. So now if you get another question like this, you can dispense with you know, these preliminaries, dispense with having to write down this equation uh, first, or maybe even write down a corresponding system of linear equations. You can go straight from the question itself to this augmented matrix here. All right, so that's very nice. A very quick way of getting the augmented matrix from this kind of question. And now we have to solve this thing. We have to find out whether there's any solutions or not. We don't know. So we have to do row reduction. Okay. So um, what are we going to do? Well, the top entry here is going to be our first pivot entry. Okay. It's the top entry of the first non-zero column. It happens to be conveniently in the right spot. It's a one, which is great. And we're gonna use that one to get rid of the minus two and the three below it. So I'm going to, uh, maybe I'll write the matrix again here. One, zero, minus one, and then two, minus two, three, minus one, one, three, minus three, zero, minus one. 
Okay, so we're going to perform a bunch of row operations. We want to get rid of the minus 2 and the 3. So we're going to take row 2. The new row 2 is going to be the old row 2 plus 2 times row 1. And the new row 3 is going to be row 3 minus 3 times row 1. What will that give us? The first row is not going to change. The second row, we have to do some arithmetic in our heads. Minus 2 plus 2 times 1 is 0. 3 plus 2 times 0 is 3. Minus 1 plus 2 times minus 1 is minus 3. And 1 plus 2 times 2 is 5. For our third row, we're going to take uh, row 3 and subtract 3 times row 1. So the first entry is 0. And then minus 3 minus 3 times 0 still minus 3. 0 minus 3 times minus 1 is plus 3. And minus 1 minus 3 times 2 is minus 7. Okay. Now, that's good. Now we are going to go to this smaller submatrix here, which is below and to the right of the pivot entry that we've just been working with. Okay, so we're going to now apply the same procedure to this submatrix. And here is the top entry in its column. So we're going to use that entry to get rid of the things below it. Okay, so we're going to go over here. And our new row 3 is going to be the old row 3 plus row 2. That will get rid of that minus 3 there. And what will we have? We'll get 1, 0, minus 1, 2, 0, 3, minus 3, 5, and 0. 3 plus minus 3 is 0. Minus 3 plus 3 is also 0. And 5 plus minus 7 is minus 2. It is now in row echelon form. Because all the rows of zeros, there aren't any, are at the bottom. And because our leading entries are staggered to the right as we go down. There are three leading entries. And the leading columns are these ones. These are the leading columns containing the leading entries. And the crucial thing that we observe is that the last column, the one on the right of the bar, the last column is a leading column. So since the last column is leading, there are no solutions. So the given vector is not in the span. Is not in the span. All right, so the story is finished here. We've really only gone halfway through the row reduction procedure, but we've gone to this row echelon form. So this is in row echelon form. And at this stage, we can identify where the leading entries are, and we can deduce that the last column is a leading column, and therefore there's no solutions. And let me remind you why that is. It's not magic, okay? It's simply because this third equation here is now the equation 0x1, plus 0x2 plus 0x3 equals minus 2. And clearly, there's no possible values of x1 and x2 and x3 that will ever make that work. Great. So what we have here is a situation where we have three vectors. We have three vectors in three-dimensional space. Okay, so. Maybe here is three-dimensional space, and here's like three vectors, okay? And so they're emanating from uh, my hand, which is like the origin, okay? And 
what we were asking is about the span of these vectors. So any possible linear combination of these vectors. Now, if you actually had vectors that looked like this, the span would be everything. Because every vector, even you know, everyone in some crazy direction like this, can still be written as a linear combination of these things. Right? You can get to over here or anywhere by some suitable combination of multiples of these ones. Because these, these three vectors are pointing in all different directions in the space. Okay, that's not entirely clear. It will become clearer uh, when we, as we keep going. But that's not what's happening here. Okay? What's happening here is that we actually had a situation where we had three vectors and another vector was not in the span. How could that be? The reason is that actually these three vectors, although maybe we don't know it, but they are actually more like this. Okay, see, they're all lying in a plane. And so if we take some other vector in some different direction, then no combination of these vectors is going to allow us to get to this other vector because any combination is still going to stay in this plane. Okay. Now to make that uh, a little bit uh, clearer and to, to be more precise about what that plane looks like, maybe we want to graph it. Let's have another look at this same question and look at it a little bit more generally, okay? So more generally, let's see when a general vector, say b1, b2, b3, is in the above span. In other words, we're taking the same three vectors. Okay, so instead of working with this original augmented matrix right here, let's replace this specific vector 2, 1, minus 1 with a general vector b1, b2, b3, and see what happens. Can we still perform row reduction? Can we still find out whether there's a solution or not? We can, and it's quite instructive if we do it in this slightly more uh, general situation. So let me copy this vector, uh, this matrix again. The left-hand side of the matrix is going to be the same, but now we're going to put B1, B2, B3 here, more generally. Okay? And we're still going to do row reduction to see you know, what condition on the B1s, B2s, and B3s are required in order for us to have a solution. We're still interested in trying to find a solution, and we're particularly interested in when can we find a solution. Okay, so we're gonna do something similar to what we did before. We're gonna take this thing here, we're still gonna use the one as a pivot, we're still gonna get rid of the minus two and the three, so it's a similar kind of story. So R2 equals R2 plus two R1, and R3 was equal to R3 minus three uh, R1. Okay, what do we get when we do that? The first row stays where it is, one, zero, minus one, and a B1 on this side. Now the second row, um, minus two minus, Minus two plus two is zero, three plus zero is three, minus one plus two times minus three is minus three. And now over here, we have B2 plus two B1. And the third row, R3 equals R3 minus three R1. So we're gonna get uh, three minus three is zero, minus three minus zero is minus three, zero minus minus, one times three is positive three. And over here, B3 minus three B1. So it's something like what we were just doing, except we're doing it a little bit more generally. Okay, what did we do next? Next, we looked at this sub matrix here and we're kind of doing row reduction on that. And we're using this as the new pivot entry and getting rid of the minus three below. So we're gonna do exactly the same thing. What did we do? We're taking row three and we're just adding row one to it to get the new row three. All right, so one, zero, minus one, there's still a B1 on this side. Zero, three, minus three, there's still B2 plus two B1 on this side. And over here we are gonna take uh, row 
3 plus row 2, sorry, that was row 2 there, it should be. Row 3 equals row 3 plus row 2 because we're using that second uh, row as the new pivot uh, row. Okay, so we get 0, we get 3 plus minus 3 is 0, minus 3 plus 3 is 0. Now we have to add. Over here, we are getting b3 minus 3b1 plus b2 plus 2b1. Notice that I'm giving myself some space here. Okay, there's no problem. I don't have to make something really cramped. Okay, I can make room. That's a good point to remember when you're actually doing this on a test or exam or something like that. Give yourself some room. Give yourself enough room. Okay, so we want to simplify this. Okay, well, this is 1, 0, minus 1, B1, 0, 3, minus 3, B2, plus 2, B1, 0, 0, 0. And what is this cumulative thing down here? How many B1s are there? Minus 3 B1s plus 2 B1. That's minus B1 and plus B2 and plus B3. Now, is it in row echelon form? Well, yeah, because there's a leading entry. And there's a leading entry. And the first non-zero entry of this last row, well, it's probably this one. Okay. Now, I put it in dotted line because we don't actually know whether that entry is zero or not. In fact, that now becomes the crucial issue. If this thing that I've just circled is zero, then, well, then this last column is not a leading column. Okay, So we can conclude something from here. So we get a solution Precisely when? Well, when the last column is not a leading column. And that happens precisely when, so it's not a leading column, when that last dotted entry is going to be zero. When minus B1 plus B2 plus B3 equals zero. That is the condition on the vector b1, b2, b3 to be in the span of the three vectors. So what we've discovered here, therefore, is that the span of the original three vectors, okay, what are the vectors? One minus two, three, and 0, 3, minus 3, and minus 1, minus 1, 0, is the plane with equation, well, if I convert it to our usual coordinates in three-dimensional space involving x1, x2, x3, the equation will be minus x1 plus x2 plus x3 equals zero. That is indeed a plane in three-dimensional space because it's a single linear equation. It's a single linear equation which is satisfied by any one of these three vectors here. If we plug minus one, minus one, zero in here, well, you can get zero. So these three vectors that we have here satisfy this equation, and this is the equation of the span of the three vectors. So this um, is a nice way of figuring out, you know, how rich a span is. Given a set of vectors, perhaps in higher dimensional space, uh, you may not know sort of how big the span is until you do a kind of row reduction like this. So this row reduction technique is a good way of analyzing the spans of, uh, of vectors. So that's a very nice application of, um, of row reduction.